Okay, so we're going to be talking about how to force a, a utility company to comply if they've overbilled you or if they have hidden charges or whatever it is that's causing you, you know, financial grief with these people, okay? There's a lot of videos out here that give you simple tips that, that are just completely useless in my opinion. Uh, it's very, it's a very light touch and we'll cover just a few of them because in some ways some of the small things do work a little bit but uh, they're definitely not going to get you a refund okay so with that being said i'm going to move on to my list here um now you should already be prepared which means you already know what your problem is on your bill so and you're able to you know at least support you know why you need that uh, money back uh beyond that Looking at your utility bill, uh, usually the companies, if you go to the website, they do have their policy. If you can identify a policy in there that says they need to give you a refund quicker or if they need to address it immediately, have that ready. Uh, and for those of you that love a little bit of research, uh, your state law, you know, regarding your utility bills, if you have any of that as supporting evidence, uh, communicating those things, uh, whether online or on a phone, is important in some ways uh and it lets them know that you're serious but this is not what the video is going to be about i'm going to show you how to to really wreck these people and do it very effectively uh so the first thing that i'm going to tell you is the minor things okay and i'm only going to cover a few minors then we're going to get to the stuff that you hear about uh the first thing is always leave a google review okay that helps other people uh, avoid the situation of dealing with that company that should be the first thing that you're always doing second is go ahead and hit yelp okay now the list of uh, state and federal companies that I'm going to want you to contact, make sure you list each one of these in your reviews. That way, uh, you're going to grab their attention. They're going to go, oh shit, this guy's very serious about this stuff. Not only that, but he is actually creating a very easy way for everybody else to report us. So the first thing you should be aware of is when you call a utility company, that's what they want. They're policing their self. You're calling their own police department, okay? Which means you're not going to the state, you're not going to federal regulators, and when you're not doing that, then there's really no penalty against them other than they're able to control what happens. They're able to control your outcome. So yes, you do need to call them and give them just only, I give them 24 hours, that's it, okay? Once, I, once my phone hasn't rang within 24 hours, then I systematically, I'm gonna uh, take you down at that point so let's move on to that part and i've got to scroll through here. There's a lot to a lot to talk about okay first thing first go ahead and make a quick call to consumer affairs yes they're a useless company they're a non-profit whatever but there is a record so you're showing a little bit of due diligence okay let's not stick with that we'll just keep moving okay first one this is for your state so you'll need to look it up this is going to be called the office of public utility council and then you want to put, of course, your state's name in there, okay? Go ahead and open up a file with them. Do not email anything. Call them, okay? Call them and lodge your complaint that way, all right? Then you want to move on from there and go to your public service commission. Look, guys, don't worry about the list. I will publish the list at the end, so you don't need to pull out a pen and paper and stop and start the video. So the first one is the Office of Public uh, Utility Council. The second one you want to contact by phone is going to be your public service commission. Remember to type in your state. Then the third thing you want to do is contact your state reliability entity. Okay, that's another regulator. And then you want to contact your public utility commission. Okay, once you're done with that, go ahead and fire off an email to the attorney general office. Tell them that uh, they've committed fraud. Okay, now you've covered your local. Now let's move on to the federal level and screw them that way. About at about at this point, you can stop, give it 24 more hours, and uh, usually they're going to comply. Okay, once these once all these agencies, state agencies, start contacting them, uh, they they're usually really quick to uh, want to negotiate at that point. But if you really want to hammer their ass real hard, you can move on to the federal level. And so we start with the North American Electric Reliability Corporation. They are a nonprofit, but filing with them, they will communicate very quickly to the utility company. That really grabs their attention. And now we're going to move on to the most serious ones. It is going to be the Utility Regulatory Commission. Once you file with those guys, it gets serious. Now you're flagging the company itself. And uh, let me tell you, that, uh, 
that counts against the points. Not a lot of people get that far or even know to do that. Once you do that, you're on that, you're on that permanent list of a few thousand people that were smart enough to get there, and now you are counting against numbers. You're counting against your actual numbers that count. Okay, let's go on to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Man, let me tell you, uh, that's like taking a baseball bat to their head. They do not, and I repeat, they do not like being contacted by the Regulatory Commission. So I'll say it again, it is the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. All you need to do is give them a call, have a conversation, how they defraud your grandma, how they run your bill sky high, and I can assure you that a call will be sent out to that utility company, and at that point, they will be shaking and ready to communicate how they're going to just make your bill so perfect. Okay, guys, look. That's about 12 different things, and that excises pretty much everything that you're going to need to do to get them. Trust me when I tell you this, you're not going to get very far through this list before uh, they're ready to comply. Okay, you're, What you're doing is forced compliance. So like I said, forget about worrying about you calling them and filing some stupid little complaint where it's them policing that. Okay, You still need to do it, but uh, that's not... You know, that, that's a complete joke. So so is calling the consumer affairs. You can call them. Look, it's people that make $2 an hour. They don't give a shit about your complaints. Uh, they just file it in a, in a file, and it may or may not get worse going. The rest of these state and federal agencies will put the heat on them. The federal ones, man, let me tell you, that counts against them at their audits at the end of the year. That shit's taken very seriously. Um, and at that point, you know, uh, they're ready to negotiate. Let's talk about some things uh, to help you save energy, okay? And I'm going to cover a few of them because I don't think a lot of you guys know this. And even if you look it up, most of the information is misinformation online. And for those of you who don't know, uh, I used to be a licensed plumber for about 14 years. So some of the things I'm going to tell you, both plumbing and electrical, I do know my shit about, okay? First thing first, your heating and air conditioning is about roughly 50% of your bill. Look, guys. You're running that air conditioning and you're running that heat all day, okay? You leave, you go to work, you're running it all day. That is absolutely the worst thing that you can do. Uh, look, today, these days they've got Nest and they've got all these different programs that can shut that stuff down all day long while you're at work. And you can program it to uh, turn the air or heat back on about 40 minutes before you arrive at home, okay? Uh, that, that in itself, just practicing that and not just leaving your house in 74, 73, or 60 or whatever is going to cut your bill in half. I mean, that's half your bill. And you're running this stuff. You're air conditioning your carpet is what you're doing. You're air conditioning your paint job. Okay? You're not going to notice that big of a difference. Okay? Unless you're going to melt your chocolate bars on the counter. Turn the stuff off. I mean, you're just burning the energy for no reason. I mean, why not make that 50%, uh, 20%? The next thing, biggest offender most people don't even realize is roughly 15% of your bill is your water heater. That water heater is either running off gas or it's running off electric. When it's running off electric, what do you think it does all day? It burns hot. There are elements in there, okay, that stay electrified and occasion that when the water gets too hot, they turn off, okay, on their own, okay? But they don't do that most of the time. They stay on all day, 24 hours a day, all year long. Look, guys, um, go to your breaker. When you, when you have your coffee, you get ready to go out to your car, snap the breaker off, and stop running it. Okay, it's not going to break the water heater. The elements are designed to turn on and off all day long. That's what it does. It's part of its function. Go to the breaker, turn it off. And then what you want to do is when you get home, this is not going to kill you. When you get home, you flip it on. Let me tell you something. I've installed thousands of water heaters. That water heater will reheat 40 gallons of water in no less than 30 minutes, unless you've got a really old unit within 30 minutes. I'm sure you can find something to do with yourself for 30 minutes while it reheats that 40 gallons. Okay, so you really only need to have that water heater burning um, at night. And even if you're home all day, if, you, if everybody's taking showers at night, turn it off. Turn it off. Seriously, when you go on a vacation, turn it off, and then you can turn it back on. Um, same thing with gas water heaters, uh, but that's a little bit more complex. Um, what you can do is if your water heater is accessible to you, on there is a red dial or a white dial or a black dial. And on there, it says very clearly on the dial, vacation. Believe it or not, that, that word means exactly what it means, vacation. When you go on vacation, it allows you to set the gas level at just enough to keep a tiny flame going, okay? Uh, 
And that's it. So you set that dial to vacation. When you get back home, you'll see if there's a little notch on the wheel that'll say uh, low, high, low, medium, or high. And then you can turn it back up about four. Actually, gas water heaters are light uh, heat water very quickly. So you only have a 20 minute wait. Look, guys, how much trouble does it take three, three, three seconds out your day to lower it to vacation when you leave and then raise it when you get back home? It's not going to break the unit unless you've had it 30 years. Okay? And even then, uh, a gas burner is thirty-five dollars, but unfortunately, the plumbers are a lot more expensive. But you're not at, at much risk if you have a, a fairly new home. Okay. Secondly, I want to tell you, washer and dryer. Okay, there's the last fifteen percent. So, washer and dryer. It's important. We're all going to have to wash clothes. Hopefully, most of you are just doing it once a week. Look, guys, the biggest offenders is your towels, your blankets, and your sheets. Okay. We all know, and we've all done this, you forget about your, your laundry in the washer, and then you realize the next day you've done it. We all know that it's not going to smell any different, not mold. Now, you leave it in two days, it's going to smell, right? Look, guys, take that stuff out, wash it, take it out, lay it out somewhere, put it on, a, you know, put it out in the open air, not outside, and let the stuff mostly dry, okay? Especially blankets and towels. Okay, so you leave it out, you know, four, five, six hours, and stuff's still going to be damp, but you've knocked out 95% of the moisture in that stuff. Then you throw it in the dryer, and there's not going to be any notable, noticeable difference when you do it, okay? Look, don't make your washer and dryer strain so hard, especially your dryer, because it burns energy. Okay, lights. Look, I grew up... Uh, like my parents at an age when everybody had to play the light bulb game, turn it on, turn it off, because it burned up your utilities. That's not the case anymore. It only represents 1% to 3%. You're absolutely driving yourself mad and crazy over superstitious shit your parents taught you, okay? Those light bulbs, if you burned everyone, is really not going to make a big difference. Uh, look, you guys running out to Walmart and Home Depot and all that buying vacuum cleaners for $99, what you're doing is you're plugging in a cash machine. What it does is it prints money for the utility company, seriously. So you just turn on that. It's an energy monster. The thing runs on 5,000 watts. So when you go and you buy a nice, cheap vacuum, just remember, all it's going to do is suck out the stuff in the carpet, and it's going to print cash for the electric company. So let me tell you something. Play it smart, people. If you're going to spend money on something that's going to print money for the electric company, that's going to run off at 9,000 watts, and knock out the breaker. There's a reason why people's breakers kick off uh, when they plug it in the wrong plug, sometimes in their home, because these damn things run a lot of Look, when you buy a vacuum cleaner, man, don't buy that cheap shit. Don't do it. Don't buy trash. Spend a couple of hundred dollars and make sure it has a low watt, a low wattage reading, okay? Otherwise, uh, you know, like I told you, if you don't mind spending $90 every time you want to pass it or if you're one of these people that are anal retentive and you like to vacuum every 30 minutes because you've got something wrong in your head, then go ahead. The, the energy company loves that. Especially, They should make maybe even an energy plan for people that are neurotic that, that, that require vacuum constantly. That way you can go ahead and spend all your life savings. Look, oh, that was intended to be a joke. If you've enjoyed this or you find it useful, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, like I said, watch half the video, get, you know, and uh, subscribe. Uh, I'm going to be covering phones and uh, household. And one last thing I want to tell you is I went through five friends' bills, okay? Their phone, the electric, the water, everything. And in every single case, I identified over $200 of money that was going out the window between hidden charges and overcharges, okay? So I can tell you for a fact, and in one guy, $500, okay? And that was between all of his bills. And so... You would be smart for listening to what I'm telling you because if you watch any of my videos, I do research and I'm hardcore, okay? I actually called utility companies and I hammered them for two weeks and I eventually figured out what was the most painful for them. So when I, when I, when I tell you that I make videos that are painful on these people and, and wreck them, that is, you know, that's what I do. So if you don't believe me, run through that list I'm giving you. I think that you'll find that these people will comply. All right, talk to you later. Bye.